Hey guys, Gene here with Fire Sprint, and today I want to talk about this little white device and how we use it to measure OEE, what OEE is, and why it's so important. So first of all, what is OEE? OEE, overall equipment effectiveness, is a measurement of how much time your equipment is running versus not running. So you can think about it as like making money versus not making money. If we're talking about a printer, a printer's really only making money when it's laying ink. A cutter's really only making money when it's making a cut. Uh, versus things like loading ink, maintenance, um, loading materials, those kinds of things where it's not actually running. We like to measure OEE here at Fire Sprint because the idea is, is that if we're trying to decide like how do we get more out of our production floor, you really have kind of two big choices and that's buy more equipment and hire more people. And sometimes you have to do both, but oftentimes, you know, we'll look at a piece of equipment and we'll realize that the OEE is only 10%. Well, 10% OEE means that we're only operating it for six seconds out of every minute, right? Or 33%, about a third, might mean that we're operating it for 20 seconds out of every minute. If you start tracking OEE on your equipment, it, you might think it's running all the time. Turns out maybe it's not actually running all the time. So if we have low OEE, that tells us that we either need better training or to hire more people. If we have high OEE, um, for us, maybe that's 50, 60%, um, high OEE means that it's probably time to invest in new equipment. So it's like the simplest way for us to do that. So how do you track OEE? Well, there's a lot of off-the-shelf products that you can buy. Um, they tend to be very expensive. I've seen a lot of them come with um, uh, subscriptions and things like that. And so we were looking for kind of a better way to track more stuff in our shop uh, for as cheap as possible. And so I found these sensors on uh, Amazon and they're actually third reality smart vibration sensors and we'll put a link down below. We don't get any affiliate uh, commission for it or anything like that. But these sensors are like 22 bucks a piece and they come with 3M double-sided tape and we stick them to a piece of equipment in an area where we think is gonna vibrate, it's a vibration sensor, an area that we think is gonna vibrate when it's uh, operating, right? When it's actually doing what it should be doing. So we might stick it to the print head itself. We might stick it to the side or a panel. Um, on our zooms over here, we actually just stick it right here. And you can see when I tap it, you see that little, well, it did. There's, there's a little light that'll come on when I tap it. And that is vibrating when this gantry is moving back and forth. So that tells us how much time is it's operating. So then what do we do with the sensor data? Well, we use a uh, free tool called Home Assistant. It's a software. And if you're into smart home automation, you know exactly what Home Assistant is. Um, and then we wrote some really basic code, which like ChatGPT can help you write. We'll put a link down in the description on, on the code that we use. And we actually track um, over a period of time, the OEE. So one of the most valuable OEE metrics that we do track and we kind of show to the guys here at the shop is the two hour rolling OEE. So at any given point, um, and we'll go back over here, we will have a, a two hour, OEE rolling and so when they come in in the morning it'll be at zero and then as they ramp up they'll watch that OEE climb and it helps kind of incentivize our team to keep the equipment running rather than to shutting it down and so that's opportunities like hey come over here I need to use the restroom or I need to grab another roll of something can you keep this running while I'm doing that rather than somebody kind of not paying attention so focusing on it um, really does help drive that OEE up. So if you have questions about this, I would absolutely love to answer them. Put them in the, the comments below um, and I'll answer the questions best of my ability. Uh, that said, I'm gonna show you where we put these sensors on more of our equipment. So obviously we have two zooms here at Fire Sprint. So the other one is right over here. We found that this works really well just to put it right on the gantry. And you know, the, the, the cool thing is, is these sensors inside, they run on two AAA batteries. And so we do have to replace the batteries every I'd say two to three weeks. So we are going through AAA batteries. You can absolutely get rechargeable AAA batteries. Um, but there's little uh, dip switches in here, they call them. And these switches, you switch them and it sets the sensitivity. So depending on what you're doing, uh, you may want more or less sensitivity. So at the Zoom here, we actually turned down the sensitivity because we didn't want like the vacuum itself causing the vibration to, to trigger it. We wanted the actual movement of the gantry to trigger the vibration. Let me show you where we put it on some of our other equipment. So we found right here on our graph text is pretty effective. We just put it right on this back panel, you know, and it's, again, it's 3M adhesive tape. So we stick that right there. And that's worked really well to tell us what the OEE on our graph text is. 
So that gives us just enough vibration to know that they're running. And I'll show you where we put them on our Colorados. So here on the Colorados, we actually, I actually put it right here. And I can, I can hold my hand here and I can feel some slight vibration. So the Colorados were actually challenging. I had to move this around to get enough vibration to actually be able to tell where that should go. And so what I found on the Colorados was kind of in this, this is an open panel here. It's kind of a span of a metal panel. And so putting it right in the middle, that panel vibrates ever so slightly and it'll trigger it. Um, I have found that sometimes if we take this and we put it like on a stable corner like that, or you know something out here, that vibration may not transfer the vibration sensor. So if you are going to use these third reality vibration sensors, just be prepared to experiment. They're inexpensive enough that you know you can go through them if you need to. Um, but oftentimes putting it kind of in the middle of a panel like that will absolutely work. I am a little hesitant to take something like this and put it right on the print head. That would be really effective. I just, if that adhesive would happen to fail, then we'd have this thing drop into the, the print zone and it could mess everything up. So keep that in mind. Make sure that if it does fall, it falls in a place that's not going to damage anything or get caught anywhere. Uh, again, if you have questions, I would love to answer for you. We can go into this in more depth but we will put a link to the code that we use for that two hour OE down in the description below. And ChatGPT really does understand the code to you know, do home assistant customizations pretty well. Uh, so you know, it's a great help for that. And it's really becoming more and more popular and common. So it's all over the place, but that's how we use home assistant. That's how we do it at Firesprint. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.